Chris Pollock. I'm Dan Wampler. We're from Simplify Building Concepts, and in this segment, we're going to show you how to build an ADA upright. First, we're going to cover the different components and parts that you would use to build uh, different types of uprights, and then we're actually going to walk you through building an upright. So this uh, particular piece of pipe that we have right here is going to be used in this example as the upright. It's a size 8, inch and a half nominal bore pipe. This is um, what we're going to use for the example of the handrail. This is a size 7 pipe. So let's talk a little bit about um, the base. Let's start at the bottom and work our way up. So we want to fix this thing to cement uh, on a ramp or stairway. Like what are we going to use to do that? There's a few different types of base flanges that you can use. Uh, the one that we have here um, is a base flange that actually allows you to go anywhere from completely plumb to your stairway or ramp. Uh, also allows you to go up to 11 degrees off plumb. Moving on from the base, what's the next piece that we need to uh, build a uh, certified rail uh, handrail? If you're building it for a ramp, uh, the chances are you're going to be needing a base rail. Uh, anytime your ramp does not have um, a wall right adjacent to the ramp or a curb of some sort, there has to be something protecting the wheelchair from actually slipping off that ramp. In which case, uh, you'd want something like this, which also is a variable angle fitting. And what this allows you to do is you can slide this on, and then what you can do is you can put another size 8 or inch and a half pipe coming off at whatever angle you need really for that ramp, whether it be 2 degrees or 10 degrees, and uh, be able to make that base rail so that that wheelchair can't slip off the ramp. Okay. Now, uh, another thing that we have when we're building an ADA rail, a lot of times, though not, it's not required in every situation, is a mid-rail. Yep. So how, how will we attach a mid-rail? Uh, the most common way to attach a mid-rail is to use uh, a fitting like this, that basically what it would do is it would slide onto the pipe, be set to whatever height you want that mid-rail at, attach it like that, and then you'd use a fitting like this that would slide into the side of this. And this fitting is unique in that it can be turned any, any angle you need to really allows a lot of versatility when you're designing the system. In other words, you can order the same pieces of parts and if you have to go up and down a grade, you can still use the same basic components. So now, um, when we're going to attach the rail at the top, how are we going to do that? Uh, the most common way to do it would be something very, very similar to this fitting. Uh, it's this guy here, but instead of being hollow all the way through, it has a cap built onto the top of it so that you don't have any water going down inside your pipe and sitting there for a long period of time. Um, a couple other ways, or one other way to do it would be to have a fitting like this here, which actually has that spot for the railing to sit right on top, which would make an actual, actual inline system for the top rail, uh, also compli compiling with ADA's requirements. So that would sit on top like that, and then, uh, and then the railing would sit here, you'd have a mid-rail uh, out a little bit from the upright, and then, a, and then a bottom rail. Now, one of the things you'll notice about these fittings is that they have some holes in the bottom of them, and that is, in order to have an... Uh, an ADA railing, the railing surface needs to be completely flat and smooth. And so you can't have a fitting that would wrap all the way around the piece of pipe. And so these holes in the bottom allow you to actually use, you know, kind of your standard self-drilling screw to, to drill up into the steel pipe. And we'll show you that just a minute when we assemble the rail. Um, what about this fitting right here? Yeah, you just want to go over that? Yeah, this fitting right here is uh, often used when you have some kind of a wall to attach that ramp to that, that railing to, whether it be on a ramp or stairway or landing. And uh, what this allows you to do basically is just attach it to, to, attach to a wall there, and you've got three points in which to screw in, uh, so it'll hold nicely in brick or concrete or wood. And, uh, and then this also obviously can be angled whichever direction that you need it to. Once again, very versatile. Okay. That's not all of our ADA fittings, but that's, that's just a preview of uh, some of the major ones that we use when we, when we specify ADA. Now, uh, if you're looking at the system and you're thinking that it's something that you would like to use in your next project, give us a call. We can talk you through uh, which pieces you need. You can even send your specifications to us, and we can actually compile a list of materials for you. Dan and I are now going to build an ADA upright. We've showed you these fittings already, and now we're going to show you real quick how they go together. We've already put our base flange down. This is a standard handrail upright. And uh, Dan, tell us a little bit about how you uh, attach that handrail and how you might... We've obviously attached it to wood here, but you know, talk a little bit about how you might attach it to concrete. Sure. Uh, typically speaking in concrete, uh, you want to make sure you have a nice solid uh, connection to the concrete, uh, in which case you'd want to get some, uh, some good anchor bolts. The size hole on the base uh, flange is, uh, is a half inch hole, 
and obviously you're going to want something that's going to have a large head on there to be able to bite down on the flange itself like this. And then uh, oftentimes what people will do is after uh, drilling into the concrete, they'll put some kind of adhesive inside that hole before actually putting in the anchor bolt, uh, which oftentimes is a good idea just to make sure you have a good strong adhesion to the concrete. Great. All right, so once we um, have that base flange attached to our surface, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to put on our upright. Once you put on this upright, you want to make sure that you uh, tighten down these set screws in the base. Now it's got two set screws in the base here to make sure that it's nice and tight. Try to pull that out of there. <laughs> now we talked about having a bottom rail on our handrail, and so this fitting is going to go on first, and that's going to be for our bottom. We're actually going to bring this all the way down to the bottom and we're going to tighten it on. In just a minute, we'll show you how we actually go ahead and attach that bottom rail in there, but for now, we're going to leave that out. Uh, the next piece in this particular railing is going to be our mid-rail. Go ahead, Dan. So we've already marked the spot on this handrail where um, this, this mid-rail is going to come down to, or this post, or we've marked the spot on the post where this mid-rail is going to come down to. So we're going to go ahead now tighten this onto the post. Now we showed you these little fittings here before. I'm just going to go ahead. Now we showed you how this has a variable angle. We'll need to play with that angle a little bit once we actually go to put the railing on. But for now we're just going to tighten it down a little bit so that it doesn't fall out of there. Okay. And we're going to put the top piece on. We mentioned we have several type of top rail uh, top rails available. This is just the one style that we've chosen to use for this demonstration. Great. As you can see, it took us virtually no time to put this top, put this upright together. And so you can put together, you know, a, a whole series of uprights very, very quickly. And then all you need to do is come along and install your pipes at each level.